praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, welcome in the name of God the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit tonight for our Sunday school teaching. And I pray that the Lord God Almighty that we have come to encounter tonight will visit us, we transform our lives in an unusual way tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. This tonight's teaching, by the grace of God, every one of us, we shall be blessed by God in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are not going to remain the same after tonight's encounter with God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to please welcome all the viewers online, on Facebook, on Zoom, and as many that will have the privilege to share it with their loved ones as well, let them be partaker of this tonight's Sunday school. Tonight, as we all know, by the grace of God given unto me, by God to take the teaching tonight, and by God's servant, Pastor Sam Kana, for the privilege given unto me, that they appreciate it tonight. And I pray okay. that God Almighty will strengthen you more and more in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please, shall we bow down our head as we go to tonight's teaching fully? Father, in the name of Jesus, we are here tonight to learn at your feet. We ask tonight that we, by your spirit that you take over tonight's teaching in the name of Jesus. Amen. We have no power of our own. We have no strength of our own. We depend on you, Holy Spirit of the living God, and we pray that you speak through me tonight. And let every one of us be blessed in your presence in the name of Jesus. Amen. And at the end of tonight's teaching, all glory, honor, and adoration shall return back unto you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are there tonight to encounter God, shout a powerful hallelujah. 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 Yeah, we are welcome tonight's teaching. We are looking at lesson 14 this evening that talks about emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence. That is what we are looking at on our Sunday school manual this evening. And I want to believe that we can all hear me clearly and see me watching live tonight. And I want you to please know before we go further in this teaching that God knows that this teaching is very crucial and is very necessary for you and I. That is why we are considering this topic tonight, which is titled Emotional Intelligence. And I believe that at the end of this teaching tonight, we shall be looking at ourselves and check ourselves to see the kind of emotions that we are displaying and the kind of Emotion, and then at the end of it, we'll be able to learn some tips on how to go about managing our emotions. And that is why I want you to please pay attention tonight as we go through the teaching and as we all look at it one by one closely to see wherever we are standing firm and to also see the area where we need to work more on ourselves. But first and foremost, as the memory verse has stated here to us, which is taken from Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32. The proverb, the memory verse is from Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32. And I want us to read it together. It says, one, two, three, go. He that he is, that is to anger, to anger is better than, than mighty, mighty, and he that will be spirit than he that he he that he he is in the city. <laughs> He said that he that is slow in anger is better than the mighty. What this particular verse of the scripture is trying to tell us to make us understand tonight that it is not by the muscle or by our stature or by our physics that we can get things done and we believe that we can be able to work, live emotionally intelligent. That is why he's saying that he that is slow to anger, that, that means that it's always better for us to be patient, to take our time to do things, to add the fruit, to exhibit the fruit of the Spirit in us before we begin to act in some areas. 
And let's look at the Bible passage for tonight as we read from the book of Galatians chapter 5 from verse 13 down to 18 quickly. It is very essential. Galatians chapter 5 from verse 13 down to 18. What does the scripture say? The Bible says, For you, brethren, have been for, for, for you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. But through love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware, lest you be consumed by one another. Oh, lest you be consumed by one another. Verse 16 says, I say then, walk in the spirits, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lost against the spirits, and the spirits against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. Verse 18. But if you are led by the spirits, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornications, uncleanness, and we have to stop at verse 18 there. Now the introduction passage of this introduction part said to us that emotional intelligence is the concept of our feelings, managing and expressing them appropriately. It tells us that it is the concept of knowing our feelings, managing and expressing them appropriately. It is also the ability to skillfully recognize and gauge, gauge how others feel and modi modify our own behaviors depending on the situation at hand in order to live in harmony with them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. It is obvious that our God is emotionally intelligent. Psalm 78, verse 38. The Bible tells us, it says, But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and did not destroy them. Yes, many a times he turned his anger away and did not stir up his wrath. That is what Psalm 78 verse 38 tells us. His emotions are positive, holy, noble, and appropriate. Since we are created in the image of God, then it means that as we mature in Christ, our emotions should in great measure share his divine quality with the help of the Holy Spirit. And I pray that the Lord Almighty will help us tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. May God will help us to begin to exhibit the fruit of the Spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me begin by saying to us here tonight that everyone born of God is born as overcomer. And by heritage, we are destined to live a triumphant life. Everyone that is born of God, we are born as overcomers. And by heritage, we are destined to live a triumphant life. Because we are God's children, we are meant to exhibit the fruit of the Spirit exactly the way God demonstrated it. First John chapter 5, verse 4 made us to understand that he that is born of God is of God and overcometh the world. And expect that the Spirit of God, the fruit of God, and everything that is in him begin to manifest in our own life as well. So that is why tonight's teaching is telling us that as we know that since we are created in the image of God, then it means that we are mature in Christ and our emotions should in great measure share his divine qualities with the help of the Holy Spirit. 
One of the ways that believers quickly identify that one of the ways that unbelievers we quickly identify a believers is by demonstrating this fruit of the spirits, of which one of it that is we be we are talking about tonight is emotional intelligence. Many unbelievers out there are not there to read the Bible anymore, but they are there to read and to observe you and I that we call ourselves a believer. They want to see how we move. They want to see how we talk. They want to see how we demonstrate. They want to see how we react to issues. They want to see how we accommodate. They want to see how we do things, either in a positive way or in a negative way. And that we really preach the gospel faster for them than to ask them to come to church before they could see. Because they want to see it in us already first, before they take it from us. And that is the reason why we need this tonight to look at the classifications of the emotions and then proceed to the managing of these emotions tonight to help us in our daily work with God. And I pray that after tonight's teaching, in any way, in any area that we need to work more on ourselves, the Holy Spirit will intervene and will begin to perfect all that pertains unto us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, I want to be sure that we are there with me and you are also going along with me. Now let's proceed further to look outline for tonight's teaching. We shall be considering classifications of emotions this evening and at the same time looking at the managing emotions. Classification of emotions and managing emotions. I want to believe that no, we can all hear me clearly, that I'm not too fast for you. Please, if you are not hearing me clearly, let me know, signal to me, and let me repeat myself so that we can be able to understand each other tonight as we proceed in this teaching. The scripture says in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 15, the Bible says that the labor of the foolish wearies every one of them, for they know not how to enter into the city. And that is why one of the frustrating things in life tonight, in today, is that is to know what you want, but don't know how to assess it. And that is one of the reasons why this teaching is very crucial and essential for you and I. Because so many of us, little behaviors, little manner of approach, little things we do has caused a lot of things out there that makes unbelievers to really question the God that we are serving. They ask questions. If you said this man is a pastor, if you said this man, this brother is a deacon, if you said this man is an elder, if you said this woman is a pastor's wife, then why are they behaving this way? Why are they treating their subordinates this way? Why are they treating their workers this way? And these are the things we shall be looking at tonight, then to see how we can pattern it and how we can work related to our individual lives and work more on it. Now let's look at the classification of emotions. Here it said to us that we shall attempt to break down emotions into three classes for easy identifications. We are going to break it down into three classes for easy identifications. And from these three classes tonight, you and I will be able to know and identify the areas that we think we are okay, we are good, and the area we need to work more on ourselves, and the area that we know quite all right that no, we have default in this area. Number one, all that we are considering tonight is only emotion. Somebody say with me, only emotions. Holy, Holy emotions. Yeah. Okay. Holy emotions. We are looking at it tonight, said to us that these are emotions expressed by God, such as compassion, which we are already seen in Psalm 78, verse 38. 
making us to understand that our God is full of compassion. Say, but he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and did not destroy them. Yes, many a time he returned his anger away and did not stir up his wrath. Means that our God is full of compassion. There are so many times you will have done something wrong that God should have decided to struck, to, I mean, to strike us, to ensure, to punish us, to discipline us, to wipe us in such a way that this thing that we have done is wrong, is not acceptable in God's sight. But in His compassion, in His infinite mercy, He still chose to have mercy on us. He still chose to forgive us, to let us go and to let us move forward. Once we have asked for mercy, once we say, Lord, have mercy upon us and help us to continue in this race, God still pardon us at many a times. So, he is saying that these are emotions expressed by God, such as compassion, jealousy. Exodus chapter 20, verse 5, made us to understand that our God is a jealous God. He's telling us that we have to desire and to know the kind of one. He said, you shall not bow down. In 20, Exodus chapter 20, verse 5, the Bible said, you shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the Father upon the children, to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. These are one of the emotions that we can find, we can see in God, that, that is a jealous God. Another one is an holy indignation. Also, can be found. Jesus, during his earthly ministry, also expressed some emotions, which we can find in Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. Only emotions can also accompany a believer's life in the spirit in times of praise, worship, and adoration. They are not necessarily religious or pious emotions. They are good and beautiful. It means that all the emotions are very good and beautiful for you and I as a believer. Let's quickly look at the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. As we look at what the scripture tells us there. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Please, I'm trying to look at this. We just to try here to see if you are there. Can you read it out for us, please? Finally, brethren, whatsoever yeah. things are true, oh, whatsoever yes. things are honest, oh, whatsoever yes. things are just, yeah. whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever yes. things are of good report, if there mm. be any virtue, and mm. if there be any praise, think of these things. Praise the Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. That these are the only emotions that God expects us to exhibit, to be in us. That He wants us to be, because He wants us to be exactly like God. And pattern our God, Psalm 82, verses have tell us that ye are God, and ye are the children of the Most High God. So everything that is found in God is expected to be found in us. Whatever that we cannot see in Jesus is not expected to be seen in our lives as a believers. So all the emotions are allowed to be seen in us and to be seen around us. So many believers today in churches and everywhere. You can wonder the way they behave. You can wonder how they see themselves and some believe they are come what may because they are older than the members in age. They believe quite all right that no, they can behave anyhow. There is no sense of humility in them. It's happening all over the world, everywhere in churches, places that you see that come what may that some with, that believe that they are meant to serve, that as an usher or one way or the other cannot just look at the someone beside them that has his or her 
pen or whatever on the ground and pick it up and give it to the person back. If you talk to some people in the church today, immediately you can see it all over their faces. That they change immediately. They begin to want them, begin to say that, no, come. Don't you know who you are talking to? I'm a professor, I'm a this and this, I have this PhD, I have this one in this area and all that. These are not the things that are found that we found in Christ Jesus. These are not the things that we can see in Christ Jesus that we can say that we want to emulate. But some have allowed pride to take over their lives to an extent that come what may, they cannot really allow the Spirit of God to take over their lives, whether in the church or anywhere and anywhere they find themselves. And it's not, these are the things that we are looking at tonight that's only emotions. Now, let's move forward because of our time. Number two is human emotions. Human emotions. These are the second classification of emotions that we are considering tonight. These are based on our human nature and situations. Our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, expressed some natural human emotions during his lifetime on earth. For instance, he wept at the tomb of Lazarus. In John chapter 11, verse 35, Jesus wept at the tombs of Lazarus. Can, have you ever wondered and pondered at the point in time to wonder why should Jesus wept at the tombs of Lazarus? If we say that he's the Messiah, but he descended so low and look at it and have the feelings that how will it be? How will it have been? What could have led to this that would make this man to find himself in this situation? But the Bible said that before Jesus could do anything, that he wept at the tombs of Lazarus. And this is the shortest verse of the scripture. So that is to tell us that if we find ourselves in some situation whereby brethren in the church share some things with us and we discover that tears are rolling all over our face, it's not that we have committed any crime or we have committed any sins. It is simply because we have so much allowed the Spirit of God to fill us, to take us to that level. That come what may, when we see any of our brethren or anybody feeling something, going through a particular challenge, going through a particular trials, that we feel as if we are the one passing through or facing that particular challenge. So, Bible said Jesus wept at the tomb of Lazarus, also scattered and sent packing those trading in the temple of God. Jesus scattered and sent packing, he demonstrated human emotions. When he saw and he found people, that are scattered, scattered and begin to do this trading in the temple of God. Why? Because he said, my house shall be a house, shall be a house of prayer. And it's not going to be a house whereby they are doing, they are using for trading or selling things or the other. But the scripture said, he scattered and sent parking, those trading in the temple of God. He demonstrated human emotions as well. And these are the things that we can see in us as well on several occasions that we believe that come. Why should these things be done here? Why are we saying this? So we get flared up and say, no, this must not be. I must not see this in the church of God. How come that you said you are coming to the church of God and you are there, you are there to take drinks, you are there to do anything anyhow, to teach in God, to sit anyhow in the church of God. There are times that our human emotions as well will tell us that no, respect God a little bit. Give honor to him. We are in his house. We are in his sanctuary. There is a difference when one is in sanctuary than when one is in mortuary. One must honor God. If truly we are going to be entitled to honor to his honor. So that means we are meant to also honor God. So human emotions are the things also that can be found in us at any point in time. So he did that in by sending them away from the temple of God. Another human emotions that was exhibited and demonstrated by Jesus is that, and grown in the spirit, being troubled. Jesus was, I mean, being troubled in the spirit. So he was grown in the spirit and he began to look at it and began to see things that, no, why should this be? That no, what is the meaning of this and all that? So he was not so happy. So there are times, there are moments 
that we look at some situation that we see our brethren going through or passing through, probably when we visit them at the hospital bed, and we know that, no, God, why should this be? So we are grown in the spirit. We are not happy. We are not that excited with what is happening around us. Why? Because these are part of the human emotions as well. In John chapter 11, verse 33, let's look at what the scripture says. The Bible says, Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Jesus, when he saw him weeping, he looked at it and know this is also human. So this is the particular challenge that he's facing at this point in time. So the Bible said that he groaned in the spirits as well. That means he himself also was not happy with the situation at that particular point in time. And these are the second human emotions that also can be seen around, around us as a believer. Now, a feeling or an expression such as happiness, excitement, surprise, ecstasy, grief, disgust, embarrassment, pain, fear, abandonment, sadness, sorrow, anxiety, stress, anguish, and vulnerability, and therefore natural, and are therefore natural human emotions. These are natural emotions that can come out from anyone, from anybody as a believer. So for the Christians, they are temporary. Why some of these emotions may be bad, they are not evil or toxic, if and when properly managed. So that means at the point whereby we display these emotions, we make us to understand and tell us whether these are good or they are bad. When we feel that no come what me, for instance, now, if my sister, sister Augusta, shares some things with me now, and at the point she shared the story with me and the things, the challenges or whatever that she is going through, and I felt within me that this is not what she should experience as a child of God who is serving God committedly, faithfully, then I feel within me that come, this must not be so, that I feel a kind of holy anger within me that we need to pray together over this. We need to pray to God for God to stop this particular thing, that this must not continue again. This must not be allowed, must not be seen. So at that particular point in time, it is not an evil to, for us to display a kind of that such an anger or madness to say against the devil that no, enough is enough. We are going to pray over this. We must pray, we must agree for the evil hands of the wicked ones to be removed totally over anyone that is serving God faithfully. And that is why I pray tonight that in whatever way that we might be facing challenges, one way or the other, as we are listening to this teaching tonight, God will intervene on our behalf in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I say God will intervene on our behalf in the name of Jesus. Amen. So please, uh, I want us to also follow as we are considering the thought classifications of emotions tonight. And this is the, an area where I want us to really take time to look at the very well and ponder on it and look at it that this kind of emotion that we are talking about, which is called fleshly emotions. Fleshly emotions. These are the emotions that we can see all around us these days. So many of us so-called believers, we demonstrate this, this now, that it can be easily found in the life of so many believers. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it can be easily found in, the, in our lives and some are really, after this now, me manifesting these emotions because they, really, they don't really take cognizance of it to really observe that, no, how am I behaving? What is happening now? How am I doing outside to assess themselves? This is called fleshly emotion, emotions. These are toxic, poisonous, and destructive emotions, such as untamed anger, 
malice, envy, selfish ambition, carnality, bitterness, lust, hatred, and etc. They are closely lined up with the works of the flesh and with evil deeds. These are the ones that are closely lined up with the works of the flesh. In other words, once we allow flesh to really gain our hands, to really fill our lives, to really be in our lives to, 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 for a long time, to an extent, we begin to demonstrate this, we begin to see all these kinds of emotions in our lives. And that is why Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21 tells us, Galatians chapter 5 from verse 19, what does the Bible say is there? He said to us, Now the works of the flesh are evidence, which are idolatry, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousy, outburst of wrath, selfish ambition, dissensions, heresies. Verse 21 says, Envy, murder, drunkenness, reverence and they like of which I tell you beforehand just as I also told you in time past that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible is telling us and making us to understand tonight that all these are fleshly emotions and it's very destructive for us as a believer we, and see the end of it there. That when one is living in anger, living in jealousy, and all that, the end of it is that it's denied us, it's rubbish us from making it to the kingdom of God. It doesn't allow us to make it to the kingdom of God. That is what the Bible is telling us here. And these are part of the emotions that is all over today in the church of God. In every year, that we see, can easily see that some people, some people, they believe they feel too big, that they are too big for pastors to, con to control them. They believe that they are too big, that they are older than a pastor to talk to them. So immediately the pastor check, check, try to checkmate them and say to them, why are you doing this? Why should you come late to church? So immediately you can see it all over their face that they change their face. I mean, they began to develop a kind of an anger. That no, how can he talk to me like that? Is he the one feeding me? Is he paying for is he, I mean, is he paying for my transport fare? Is he doing this and that? Forgetting to know that pastor is just a God's representative there. Pastor is meant to be there, to be a servant of God, to be a shepherd over there. So if you are seeing your pastor as if you are not seeing God, as if you are seeing a human being, that means you don't really know what you have accepted. So Looking at them like that, they allow a kind of a fleshy emotions to take over their lives. And that makes them to misbehave. So if they believe that, no, if they talk to them for too long, the next thing is that you see them carrying their Bible and say, no, I'm not coming to that church again. Why? Because that brother steps on my toes. Why? Because that sister, that head of department, talk to me anyhow. How can she talk to me like that? Am I, am I, am I amazed? No, if I look at it, I'm senior her. I can give back to him. I can do this and all that. So these are the fleshly emotions that the scripture is saying to us that we need to understand in case there is any of it that is in us and we need to begin to see how to work on it to get them out of our lives so that at the end, it will not rob us, it will not tarnish us from making it to heaven. And I pray tonight that whatever way, in any area that we are exhibiting or demonstrating Fleshly emotions in us by the Spirit and by the grace of God, it shall be removed tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Say, it shall be removed tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, let's proceed further by considering the how do we then manage these emotions? After considering the classifications of the emotions, looking at it that we classify into three emotions, that we have the holy emotions. We have human emotions and we also have fleshly emotions. Then, let's see how we can manage the emotions. There are several points here for us to see.
see how we can manage emotions and we shall be looking at them tonight. Now, the concept of emotions, the concept of emotional intelligence is quite helpful in opening our understanding to how we can manage our emotions and relate better with others. Here are some practical steps to take in order to be emotionally balanced. There are practical steps here given to us to take so that we can be emotionally balanced. And I please want us to take this serious tonight so that we will begin to work on ourselves on a daily basis and begin to check ourselves to see if we are still in faith or not. Yeah. Now, it's number one is called self-awareness. Self-awareness. Identify and admit that you have issues with emotions and have a clear picture of how you appear to most people in order to make self-improvements. Number one way to manage emotions, the first way to manage emotion is that you must be self-awareness. Identify and admit that we have issues. That we have issues with emotions and have a clear picture of how you appear to most people in order to make self-improvements. 7 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 says, examine yourself to see whether you are in faith or not. So that means we need to want to examine ourselves from time to time. The first way to manage our emotion is that we must what? Examine ourselves. As we examine ourselves to know the kind of emotions we display, to know whether we are still this, I mean, it's plain a only emotion, emotions or human emotions or flesh, fleshly emotions. This will enable us to know how we work on ourselves and how we get better on a daily basis. And the Lord will hear us and will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. I say God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number two Amen. is what is called self-control. Self-control is very essential for you and I. It helps us to regulate our emotion by putting it under check so that it does not take over, take you over. Self-control regulates our emotions by putting it under check so that it does not take you over. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32. Shall we consider what the scripture says in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32? Quickly. If we are there, read. please read it out for is, us. Proverbs 16, Sorry? verse 32 says, He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. I, I can't hear you clearly. Ah, ah, ah. Okay. In he Proverbs chapter 16. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. Yeah. And he that ruleth his spirit, than he that taketh a city. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. So self-control is very crucial in order for us to manage our emotions as a believer. When we are under self-control, we will be able to manage our emotions correctly. We know where we are expected to talk. We know where we are expected to to, to react. We know where we are expected to behave somehow. There are so many things that the scripture, the Bible expects us as believers to be able to take. There are so many things that people will tempt us, people will kind of provoke us. People will do so many things that will want us to react badly as a believer. But by being under self-control, we'll be able to regulate our emotion and put it under check so that it does not take us over. Number three is self-motivation. Self-motivation. Regardless of the situation or circumstance, rather than being depressed, moody, sad, or aggressive, try to encourage yourself and maintain a stable temper. 
This is making us to understand here that rather than being depressed, moody, or sad, or aggressive, try to encourage yourself and maintain a stable temper. Self-motivation is very crucial and very essential for us. Why? Because there are moments, there are times that as a believer we will go through some challenges. We will face some things that we know like, no, this thing is not okay. We will hear some news about our family members, our brethren, that we believe that, no, how does this, that will make our face, that will change our countenance. But yet, we still have to be in church. Yes, we still have to be in the midst of people. Yes, we still have to relate with people. So, this act of people has to be things that will give us a self-motivation. And that was the reason why in 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 6, the Bible said that David strengthened himself in the law. David encouraged himself in the law. Despite the challenges, despite the situation that he found himself at that particular point in time, Yet, David still encouraged himself in the law. This area, I was able to pick something good as regards this self-motivation when some, a particular man of God had a challenge, this challenge in my country. This man of God is a devoted man, is a pastor over an assembly. But in, one, in a day, his house got burnt and he, lose, he lost the twins child that he has then. He has two children. Two children got born in the house. You can imagine how that terrible will be. So the news and everybody, the, I mean the reporters, the radio station and everywhere, the, the news got spread all over. And this happened on uh, Saturday, for, uh, then Friday through Saturday night. And on Sunday morning again, this man was on the pulpit to preach, to share the good news of God. Yes, all over his face, you cannot even see anything like that, that this is the man that this thing happened to. Together with his wife, they came to church, and during the praise and thanksgiving, they were dancing, like as if nothing happened to them. People around were feeling sad. People around were feeling moody. Ah, what kind of man is this? What kind of lifestyle is this? Yet this man still preached the best message on that very day. Knowing fully and believe that come what may that all this happens to the glory of God. And he decided to what? To put himself under self-control so that he can be you know, self-motivation, so that he can be able to what to do what God has called him to do. And this is the way that God expects you and I to begin to behave and act. You are not the only one going through that challenges. Sometimes, something like that, people face different challenges. So yet. We still believe that God is God. We cannot, because of that, say that no, we are going to, we are not, we are going to deny God. We are not going to say because of that, we are not going to serve God again. So these are the things that we need to do to put ourselves to manage our emotions rightly. And God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Amen. The first point that we are going to consider tonight is self-expression and empathy. Self-expression and empathy. Self-expression and empathy. You should always find an appropriate channel and time to politely express your feelings. You should always find an appropriate channel and time to politely express your feelings and judge people less by saying things from their point of view. What is the scripture saying? What are they trying to tell us here? Here they are trying to make us to understand something. For instance, you are in the church as a choir, as an usher, or as a prayer team member, or whatever the admin should function in the church. And in the course of the teaching, one way or the other, pastor decided and called you to get up and ask you some questions. And you feel embarrassed that no, why should he ask me this question in the in, in the public like this? Why should pastor talk to me this way and all that? In this area, he's telling us that we should what, be able to know how we relate and when to throw something, to say something. Even if you feel what pastor is asking you at that particular point in time is not too good or is not expected to ask you at that particular point in time, wisdom demands that. 
you, I mean, you swallow your pride, you don't allow ego to enter you, you don't allow yourself to find yourself in such a way that you behave abnormally. You relax, you tell him with wisdom that, sir, I will explain to you better after the service. Not that you begin to judge or you begin to defend yourself so that people can know that you can talk, so that people can know that you can react at that particular point in time. No, sir. This is not, this is not the way to manage our emotion. So at that particular point in time, it's expected that you, you be calm. You don't judge people anyhow. You listen to people. You don't judge them immediately. You consider that come what made yourself that no, you can as well be in their shoes, the way they are feeling, the way they are doing things. So that is what the scripture is telling us here about self-expression and empathy. Here. Yeah. So Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 to 5. Quickly, if you are there, can you help us to read it out? What does the scripture say here? Where? Matthew what? Matthew chapter 7. That's Matthew 1, to 7 5. 1 to 5. Says, yeah, the scripture says, Judge not. not. Okay, man. That he be not judged. Okay. For with what judgment he judge, he mm. shall be judged. He shall be judged. What measure he made, he shall be Wait. measured to you again. Okay. That's three. And why beholdest thou the mold that is in thy brother's eye? Mm. But considerest not the beam that is in thy own eye. Oh, yes. How will thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mold out of thy eye, mm. and behold the beam is in thy own eye? Oh. Thou behold it. First cast out the beam out of thy own eye. person behave, how this person do things, why you are not considering yourself first that what are the things that I need to work on myself? In what area do I need to I mean, manage my own emotions? And that is why that area is very crucial and essential for us. Now, number five, which is the last point on how to manage emotion is self-social skill development. Develop the right level of rapport. I mean, that, I mean, that is relationship with people you come across. And be patient in your dealing with them. You must be able to develop the right level of rapport with people you come across. And be patient in dealing with them. Patience is very essential here. And that is why Proverbs chapter 16 verse 32 that we read earlier on says, he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. <clears throat> so don't quickly react. Don't quickly judge. No, understand that you are relating with people, that you are moving with people, you are in the midst of people. So we must learn to manage our emotions when we are dealing with people. You must understand that you are not from the same father, you are not from the same mother. Even if you are from the same father and the same mother, you have different characters, you have different behaviors. So you can't judge people by the way you judge yourself or the way you see yourself. And that is what is telling us here as the number five way to manage emotion. But let me quickly add this to it that one of the ways, number six ways to also manage emotion is what? By studying the word of God. By studying the word of God. The Bible says in Joshua chapter one verse eight, that do not let the book of the Lord depart from your mouth, that thou shalt meditate on it day and night, that you may be able to do according to what is written. Yeah. So regularly studying the word of God allows the spirit of God to take over our lives so that it helps us to manage our emotions. It helps us to live as the spirit, not according to the flesh. And the Lord God Almighty will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say, God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. However, all the practical approaches mentioned above may not yield the expected results unless 
the believer yield himself first to the Holy Spirit. Who helps him or her respond differently to each of the three categories of emotions. The Holy Spirit is the only one that can work in us, that can help us to be more better as a believer. The Holy Spirit rejoices and assists us when we engage in holy responses. He produces them with us so that so they can justly be called the fruit, the fruit of the spirits. According to Galatians chapter 22, chapter 5, from verse 22 to 23. On the other hand, the Holy Spirit comforts us when the human emotions such as grief, grief overwhelm us. Based on John chapter 14, verse 16. The Holy Spirit comforts us. Remember that I said that is the comforter. So who is there to comfort us? So lastly, the Holy Spirit also helps us to break the grip of fleshly emotion, such as hatred, lust, and revenge. In fact, the Spirit was against such impulses so that we cannot fully give way to our worst desires. Hence, the Holy Spirit becomes the source of our intelligence when we take heed to his promptings. Pray that from tonight that a grace to begin to yield and be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. God will give unto us from today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say God will give it unto us from today in the name of Jesus. Amen. So please, in conclusion, Amen. the power to defeat deep and difficult emotions come from God and involves the human spirit coming into contact with God's spirits. So that means we need to also put in our efforts. The power to defeat deep and difficult emotions come from God and involves the human spirits. We have role to play. We have to study the word of God. We have to practice the word of God. We have to do all these things and we have to pray to God. I want you to please bow down your head tonight as we talk to God. Let's pray to God this evening. You have had it all tonight. In what way did you need to manage your emotions? In what way do you think that things are not being done rightly? Ask God tonight and say, Holy Spirit of the living God, help me to begin to walk according to your spirit, to your leading. Let your spirit take over my life, God, and begin to manage my emotions rightly. Open your mouth and turn into prayer as you are there listening and watching me tonight. Pray that prayer. Say, Mom, give me the grace to manage my emotions rightly. Help me to be able to be sensitive to your living. Help me to be self-awareness. Give me the grace to control, regulate my emotions. Help me, oh Lord, to be able to know how to relate with people, to manage people, to understand people around me, and to live and to walk according to your spirits. Father, help us tonight, as we have had your word this night, the grace to manage our emotions. Give rightly, give unto us, O God. Father, we thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord, because you have heard us. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' Amen. mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. As you have declared tonight, so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. A grace to manage our emotion rightly, we receive tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we begin to walk rightly before God and manage our emotions perfectly, correctly in the name of Jesus. Amen. And at the end of each hug, here on heart, we shall not be a castaway in heaven in the name of Jesus. Amen. So shall Amen. they be. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless you for tonight. Thank you, Pastor Vincent. We bless God. That was a great teaching. The Lord bless you. The Lord strengthen you the more. 
Amen. Lord, I encourage you in his in your walk with him. Amen. And may you be empowered with the grace to overcome every form of emotional trauma in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Our oh, precious Lord and God, we want to say big thank you, King of Glory, for this Sunday school session that you have brought to a close tonight. Father, we have learned so many things. The grace of God Almighty to practice them, O God, give unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm. Let us, O God Almighty, be Amen. filled with your word and with the Spirit of God so that we Amen. begin to manifest the fruit of the Spirit yes. in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, the grace to continue to the Amen. end peacefully, gracefully, and successfully give unto us in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Amen. Amen. Shall we share the grace? No, of please. Uh, questions. There should be questions. Okay. And there uh, are people are uh, okay, making questions. questions online. Oh, okay. So we need to check online. I see, I want to declare uh, my daughter, Princess Julie Praise, says also prayer and fasting can help us manage our emotions. Okay. Praise the Lord. If I think that is also very good pray because when you are fasting, uh, if, I'm, if I'm wrong, the uh, Sunday school coordinator will say, prayer and fasting, yes, it can really help you to manage your emotion. It controls your flesh. It controls your body. You don't do things anyhow. You don't talk anyhow. Uh, the fasting turn your flesh. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. You are very correct, sir. Somebody is on you, Big, precious behind the scenes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Please, I have a, um, I have a question, and uh, the question is coming from our Bible passage, Galatia chapter five, verse um, I think. Uh, 17 okay. and he says for no I think um, okay, let me start from 17 and he says for the, for the flesh lost against the, the spirit and the spirit against the flesh these are opposition to one another so if that you are led by the spirit you are not under the law so I want to understand and uh, before I ask Jesus said in John chapter 15 Verse 10, he said, If you love me, you keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. And this place again, we are, we are saying that Paul rightly said that, but if you are led by the Spirit, we are not under the law. So, my question here is that, what does it really mean? Does it mean that um, if we are in grace, like I, I, I rightly hear some people say, that we are no longer in the time of law? That we are that we are, we are in the time of grace. I want to understand this very place. What was the Bible trying to tell us that if we are led by the Spirit, we are not under the law? So that is my question. If you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now, let's look at the Bible portion that says, <clears throat> Shall we continue in grace? It's saying <clears throat> that grace may abound. Sorry, I'm opening it now. Okay, praise the Lord. Romans mm -hmm. chapter 6 and verse 1. The Bible clearly states here that what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And verse 2 says, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Let me check what other um, translation says. Verse 2. I want you to clarify something there. He said, By no means we are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Now, if you say you are a believer and you say, Oh, the age of law has passed, oh, this is the season of grace. And because the time of grace, I can do anything I like. Always have in mind that the Bible says that God says you should be holy, for He is holy. He said, if you keep my commandments, then are you my friends? You understand? And so if you are 
saying, oh, uh, the time of the uh, law has passed, the law of do this and do that. That is not true. God does not uh, condone sin. And so anything sin, the Bible says he hates. And again, the Bible says that the prayer of a sinner is an abomination unto him. Galatians 5, 17. Praise the Lord. Am I answering your question at all? Yes, mommy. Thank you so much. Okay. So, because people are just, they want to enjoy sin. Mm. And I tell them, what is in this life? All that we have, all that we live for is for God. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and every other thing will be added. How can you seek the kingdom of God when God is holy, his kingdom is holy, his word is holy, you are living in sin, enjoying sin. The Bible says, he that sinned is the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning he's been sinning. So if you are, you know, uh, 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 enjoying sin and you think that you can please God, no. Mm. Remember Romans 6 verse 1 and 2. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning? So that grace may increase or may abound or multiply for us. May God forbid. By no means. For we are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? How can we? Praise the Lord. The Bible says that you are his temple. In you he dwells. And so if you now commit sin, how can God come and dwell in a dirty body that the devil is in charge. That's why, you know, for a believer, you don't even argue for this kind of thing. Those that want to continue enjoying sin, if there is any enjoyment in sin, let them continue. But for you that knows the truth, the Bible says the truth will set you free. When the time comes, hmm, my same mom used to say, when they say plant yam, you say you are planting cocoa yam. When the visitor that comes for yam comes, you now can bring cocoa yam to save the person. So if they are planting cocoa yam, let them continue. You plant the better one that is yam that you can give your visitors. When Jesus comes, is at the rapture that everybody will know what he or she has been living for. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, ma'am. I don't know so if anybody has something to add. No, but is, clear. is it clear, Precious? That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, because... Um, uh, when you read, read a different version, he said the sin. What he said that the sinful self, he said the spirit uh, wants to do the things of the spirit, but the flesh who want the spirit to dance to its own tune. That is why we as Christians, we are. You see, the flesh wants you to be to be doing the things of the flesh, but the spirit of God wants you to be. So they are always fighting against each other. So as long as you have been uh, delivered, you are under the control of the Holy Spirit. You don't. You are not under the control of the, the flesh again, the law. So you are delivered completely. So we cannot continue in sin that we continue to say grace will abound. Grace will abound. No, we need to completely take ourselves off. Praise the Lord. Thank you for that question. Very wonderful question. Thank you, sir. Any other question, please? Yeah, good evening. Good evening. And I don't know. Um, my question is uh, based on emotional, human emotion. I actually observed something in my diary. Um, the question, let me just go straight to the question. If you are walking in the house of the Lord and maybe you are outstanding and your pastor has to be using you to do the thing, maybe a chorister or the uh, usher and your pastor have to use you, you all the time to be doing things in the house of the Lord. And there are other people following you, and you are um, you are dedicated to your duties. And there are some certain people in the church that will actually say, "Are you the only person?" Mm -hmm. And they may actually confront you. In in that scenario, what as a child of God, and you will have this hunger to serve God. What will happen because it, it eventually the emotions are being tempered with. Mm -hmm. Praise Thank the Lord. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Now, that is the spirit of jealousy in us. Yeah. And this spirit of jealousy, you know, uh, causes confusion in relationships. Even in the secular world, even in the secular world, when you are excelling in your academics or in the, in the place of work or in your business, you are going to have enemies. Mm. Now, two days ago or so, our open heaven talked about uh, not uh, you. Everybody, everyone has an enemy. People get jealous because you are excelling. But I tell such people, especially in the church of God, if somebody, if you are in the choir and the other person is doing better than you, there is no need to get jealous over that person. You need mm. to improve your own self to be like that person. Mm. And so not because the, the pastor is a design on it, because the person is reliable. The Bible says, Seed thou a man diligent in his work, he is yes. among kings. Yes. And so the pastor wants him or her to know to him because he or she is helping his work to succeed. Mm. So if you are in a, in a position whereby you know that uh, you are not the best usher, the pastor is not even among the children. You see parents, they have the best children on top. It's difficult to not see all the children equally, but that one that is dedicated, you know that oh, they must be put on the table, the daddy should must be the next, they must be next, food must be ready to have money, those everything will be loved by the parents. Yeah. So the secret to this kind of situation is don't let anybody discourage you because that jealousy brings about envy and then envy brings about what discouragement. All they want to, to be like them. So please do not be like them. Yes, so. Praise the Lord. Don't Thank be you. like them because the Bible says it is only the diligent that will sit among kings. You want to sit among the kings. That's why your boss in the office will like you. Your uh, business executive will like, uh, uh, like you. And then your pastor will love you. Not because of anything uh, what the other people think about. No. Nobody wants to fail. And so if you are helping your pastor to succeed, he will like you. If you are helping your leader to succeed, you don't mind what other people say. Just be careful of them because when jealousy comes, envy comes, it will lead to any other thing that may be more dangerous than that. Praise the Lord. I hope I've answered your question. Maybe other people who are daddy will answer you as well. Yeah. Can I say okay. something, ma? Okay, go ahead. Okay. Because one question is still waiting for you at the, uh, okay. at the uh, Facebook. Thank you. I will try to make it brief, sir. Yeah, concerning that question, sir, that my brother asked just now, I want to relate it to the scripture mommy quoted that, see thou a man diligent in his work, that he shall stand before kings and not mean men. I want us to know something that, as a believer, that uh, there is something about God that when you follow God's principle, let me put it this way, that there is no way you can be spiritually sound that you will not be actually relevant. It's not possible. You cannot be spiritually sound. You cannot be devoted, committed to the things of God and not be noticed anywhere. It makes you to stand out anywhere you find yourself. Look at the age Jesus Christ was when they noticed that there is a particular grace upon him when he began to teach in the temple and all that. As one and two that I want you to know is that if Jesus Christ can be stoned, if they make attempts to pull him down, to ensure that they, they do something to him to come down, who are I, who are you? Nobody throws stone on an unripe fruit. When they see the grace of God in you, when you are doing the things of God, there is no way you will have challenges, you will have oppositions. So all you need to do is that don't mind oppositions so that you will not lose your position. Don't be discouraged. Yes, sir. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> uh, finally, let me contribute to that. And um, uh, yeah, like he said, when once you are spiritually sound, get ready for it. Why should we? Uh, be apart. Look at what the Bible says. I want us to see Galatians chapter 5. Uh, it said, uh, verse 22, he said, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, 
joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, Good against God there is no law. Now, if you are a born again Christian, if you are spirit filled, and you you want to grow in the spirit, and you, you claim that you, you have the fruit of the spirit, that fruit of the spirit, that's it, it must be tested. So like Jesus was tested, all the stoning, the stoning, also test his patience. So whatever you are passing through there, your emotions is being attacked there to test your spirit. When once you fall, they will say, hey, I thought he was a Christian. Once you react, they say, hey, see, he's a Christian, see how he's acting. They will rubbish you. So you need to be patient. You need to apply the fruit of the Spirit here. That is what they are testing. And I pray that God will give us the grace to stand firm in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that very good question. Uh, there's a question on, face, on Facebook uh, comment. Um, and somebody, I think the robot said, I have a question and it is this. Why did God give us emotion? Okay, we, we come to that question. He will give his Baroba, he will answer it himself. Um, uh, let's answer let's answer the question our sister princess judy from facebook says pastor vincent please make me understand the phrase holy anger because according to the bible it is a sin to have anger in our heart the phrase was said during an example you gave of a friend who came to talk to you about what was bothering her so okay uh, yeah what i mean by holy anger is that uh, there are times there are situations whereby you know that someone who is devoted who is a child of god is facing a particular challenge is going through a particular trauma and a particular thing that you know this thing is not palatable for her to experience or for him to experience and they share it with you at that point in time, what I mean by holy anger is that you, you, you get worried within you and you decided that no, this is not and it was supposed to be allowed. This particular situation is not supposed to happen to this particular person. How can this particular brother or sister find himself in a situation whereby after appearing at that interview, putting on a effort, and yet they are trying to say to her, maybe she should, have to, she should have to come and bribe before that job can be given to her. So you develop a holy anger by agreeing with her that, no, God, we must cry to you. You must help her out in this matter by praying together to resolve the matter and to let the thing be granted unto the person. That's what I mean by developing holy anger. So that is not the what the anger is. The anger is not leading you to do something evil, or to cry to God to intervene on our behalf. Praise That's the Lord. what I mean by that. Yes, I will also make a contribution there, my sister, my daughter, Julie. We are listening. Uh, like the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, 4 verse 26, Ephesians 4, 26, it says, Be ye angry, and uh, sin not. Let mm. not the sun go down upon your anger. 10, 27 says, Neither give place to the devil. Therefore, you can see, holy anger there we are talking about, for example, if somebody is uh, uh, committing sin, like uh, somebody, you see somebody committing sin, you will be angry with that person. You say, that thing is not right. What you are doing is not right. You try to make sure the person feels that that thing that he's doing is not right. You get angry for that what he's doing. That is unholy anger. You are not actually angry with the person to the point of hating the person. But you are angry with that thing that person is doing, not with the person to see. So that is why the Bible says, when you do this, when you are angry, it will just let it come. But don't let it, don't let it uh, stay too long. That's why he said, let not the sun go down. And because when you allow it to stay, the devil will use that opportunity to continue to tell you, deal with that person. You can see, she's committing sin. You can go ahead, you can slap her, you can do things. So, but God doesn't want us to go to that extent. This is what we do with love. Praise the name of the Lord. I hope that is clear. Amen. 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 So somebody is asking him, um, he said, I am late. Can someone let me know the theme of today? 
Vincent, can you tell us again the team of uh, study today so that somebody who just came back will also benefit? The team for today is emotional intelligence. Okay, by emotional intelligence. Oh, great. Uh, somebody has even put it, my sister Julia has put it on the tree, saying emotional, emotional intelligence is the topic. Now, Brother Ugo, uh, Brother Ugo, are you there? No, he's not. He's his wife. Oh, he's his wife? <laughs> he's the one that asked the question. Okay, oh, I am sorry. Here. I am driving, but I am here. Oh, sorry. I didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> you can see. Uh, you are asking, and you are asking, you said, um, Okay, he said, why did God give us emotions? Hey, Brambo, please answer us so that everybody will benefit. Ah. <laughs> if I knew the answer, I would not have asked the pastor. But um, if, I, if, I were to, if I were to attempt to give an answer, yes. I would say God gave us emotions because he wanted us to express our love to him express mm -hmm. our devotion to him. Mm -hmm. e essentially, emotions are for expression. E-motion. You move. It makes em your emotions make you move. Motion. E-motion. So, it's, it's an expression of um, an expression of a feeling, because emotions are always feelings. People tell you, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel. They're just expressing their emotions. So God gave us emotion so that we can express our love and our devotion and our worship and praise to him. That is my, that, 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 that would be my attempt at answering that question. I have asked that question um, somewhere before and the person said God gave us emotion because he has emotion. I don't think, uh, even though God has emotions, I don't think that is a, a very, a very, that is not the answer I was hoping to get. But the answer that I, that I, if, I, if anybody asked me why did God give me emotion, I would say God gave me emotion so I can express my love to him, my love for him, and in praise and in worship and in adoration and in my devotion. That would be my explanation of why God gave us emotions. And if I, if, if I may contribute with regards to holy anger, going by that verse that you read, Pastor, Mm. The the Bible, the um, Paul, the writer said, "Don't give place to Satan or Satan. the devil." Mm. Exactly. So any anger that gives place to Satan is not the anger. That's my definition of only anger. Mm. If your anger gives place to Satan or gives room, makes room for Satan, it is not only anger. Yeah. Praise, Thank you, sir. praise the name of the Lord. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, actually, to be very frank, um, God has given us the... That's why he gave us the opportunity to do anything. And so he wants us to express our feelings. If you look at many prophets, like Moses and so on and so forth, they, they, they express their feelings. And so God wants us to be free to say it to cry to him, to show our emotions so that he will be able to know that we love him. That's true. And there are a lot of other things that um, he gave us. He allowed us to have that emotion. And I believe uh, there are many people who would want, who, who there will contribute something that is uh, also um, helpful. Praise the name of the Lord. If you have any contribution on that, you can put it on, your, on the Facebook and uh, the comments so we will also benefit from it. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, my son here, Edo, said that um, in the church, he said he have a testimony almost died. Hey, Ebro Edo, can you share your testimony with us? We would like to hear your testimony. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Can okay. you give us a Okay, on Thursday, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. On Thursday first clinic, I actually put a prayer request that um, I was actually sick. So on the night, that night, I went back to sleep. I had a very serious prayer. All over my body was serious pain. And I couldn't wake up. 
Luther did the whole thing was getting to an end. But I, re I remember the prayer you prayed for me, and I still hold on that. And by the grace of God, I am here, healthy, and now. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. We give God the glory. Honestly, I remember while we were having a, a faith clinic, and I quickly saw his uh, uh, prayer request. That is why when we are doing the faith clinic, we definitely, uh, I'll always check the comment on the Facebook. And immediately I saw that he's, he, what he posted and said is very sick. We just paused and we prayed for him. We released a prayer for him. Prayers are powerful. And I thank God for that testimony that he has been healed and he is here today. You can see him uh, contributing. May God continue to touch us and hear our prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Any other contribution? This is very interesting. Am I right? Yeah. Very, very interesting. I, I love this. I love it. The time we are spending is not a waste. It's not wasted at all. Uh, because we we are benefiting from it. Mami Aga, Mami Aga, pray God bless you. He said, Glory be to the Lord. And uh, I think she's a, my daughter, Princess, is happy with that uh, answer. Uh, the person that asked question about emo emotional intelligence, uh, on, uh, Honorable Nabis Olivia, he said, Thank you very much. I think he has gotten the, the, the topic. So, any other question or contribution before we close, before I hand over to the coordinators on the school? Okay, mommy, over to you. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, Brother Vincent, thank you so much. God bless you. It's okay. been a wonderful teaching, and it's been a very wonderful question time. I am blessed personally. I know all of us here are also blessed. Thank you, those viewing us from Facebook, Brother if I if I go, uh, just, uh, Pastor Joshua from all the way from Bahrain, uh, sister, uh, Mommy Elizabeth, I, uh, God bless you from Nigeria. We are glad to have you. And my son from US, God bless you. Bless in Ghana. God bless you. Uh, sister Kate and Brother Obo, thank you, thank you. Mwah, we love you. God bless you. Thank you for joining us all the way. God bless you. And uh, Brother DK, thank you for your contribution. And Sister Bia, we love you so much. Our able technical personnel, the men behind the scene, we are grateful to you, Jesse and Samuel. We love you so dearly, and we pray for more grace upon you. Brother Idogo, God bless you for always faithfully joining us. And our able teacher, uh, Sister Lida, we love you with your card. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you so much, our pastor, for the time and patience with us today. It's a very interesting topic, and Brother Vincent did justice to that topic. Mm -hmm. God bless you. More anointing and more grace. Mm -hmm. Our pastor will bless us. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Please um, don't forget, uh, tomorrow we also have a, a house fellowship on Zoom and as well on uh, uh, Facebook. Please join us by 6 p.m. tomorrow Sunday for our house fellowship. It's always very, very interesting. And as you join, God will bless you in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Everlasting Father, we just want to thank you. I thank you for all your children that have connected to this uh, uh, study tonight. I ask, oh Lord, as we have heard, that uh, it will not be in vain that we are listening to this word. That uh, as a result of this, our life will be transformed. All the uh, flesh, fleshy, emotional, that emotion that we have been exhibiting in our lives, Father, we will put them off and will begin to walk with holy emotions in the name mm -hmm. of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We pray from tonight, Lord, that our character, our behavior, our action, no matter how intimidated we are, no matter how we are pushed to the wall, Father, we will still make sure that we conform to the Spirit of God. Father, thank you for all those that are connected to this uh, message tonight. I pray that, Lord, as we go home, you will continue to guide us and direct our steps. Amen. Blessed be your holy name. Amen. In Jesus' name.
mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Daddy. Yes. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Good night. God bless you. <laughs> he likes to study with us. <laughs> he likes to study with us, mommy. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 bye.